1 Kings chapter 6, going in the temple. And it came to pass in the 480th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt. It's been 480 years since the Passover. The book of Exodus. In the fourth year of Solomon's reign. So you have a date here. Solomon's in his fourth reign, and it's 480 years from the Passover. So you, you can go and find out the dates, which most Bibles have the dates. I haven't done it. I'm doing a very basic dates. Reign over Israel in the month Zip. That's the first time that word shows up, Zip. Which is the second month. So, Israel becomes a nation, Avid, 15. When they come out on the Passover night. When all the firstborn of Egypt are, di are died. 480 years later in a month and one day. The second month. Here's the building. The foundation. Of the temple. I just think it's remarkable. It's just wonder why it wasn't Abed. That he began to build the house of the Lord. So this is the starting date. Two important dates of the Hebrew calendar. Abed, begin of a nation. Zip, the beginning of the temple. For 480 years there has been no temple. It's been that, and a little, a little bit less than that, because the ark was made later when they were at the Mount Sinai. There's been curtains. It's been ram skin. It's been badger skin. It's been pillars. It's been veils. Now we're going to get to a physical structure that David wanted. Remember, this was David's idea. Lord God, I'm in a house of cedar beautiful you're out in a bunch of curtains and the house which king solomon built and a lot of this i'm not going to understand i'll try to do the best i can and the house was king solomon built for the lord the length thereof was three score cubits 60. a score is 20 so you take the number before it times 20 60. And the breadth thereof, 20 cubits. And 20 is an interesting number in the Bible. It shows up a lot. And the height thereof, 30 cubits. So that's the measurements of the house. And the porch. There is a porch to this building. There was no porch to the tabernacle. Before the throne of the house, 20 cubits was the length thereof. It matched the breadth. So the porch is the same breadth of the, of the house. The length thereof according to the breadth of the house. And 10 cubits was the breadth thereof before the house. So it comes out 10 cubits. So you would actually have with the porch. You would have. Three scores. You would have 70 cubits by 20 cubits. Length and width. Was it the courtyard? outside it could be but the porch this is going to fit those big pillars that, that he builds later Dane. but um in front of the porch is the brazen altars and it's not where the brazen altar and the wash are. it's it's like an addition to what the tabernacle is. there's still a courtyard but between the courtyard and uh, the house here's this porch and those beautiful pillars are going to be there. And this is magnificent. And a lot of, if you look up a lot of, uh, for pictures on the internet, Solomon's uh, temple. I mean, there's a lot of different variations. But uh, it's just remarkable. And let's see, the porch. According to the breadth of the house, 10 cubits was the breadth thereof before the house. So it's right before the house, there's a porch. So what do most houses, a lot of houses have? Don't they have a porch before the house? 
That comes out of the Bible. And for the house he made windows of narrow lights. And what does it say? The house has got windows. The tabernacle had never had windows. Narrow lights means that they're very narrow windows. They're not thick. Uh, why? They're narrow. Again, all okay, right, now this is where it's going to get a little hard for me. Against the wall of the house, this would be going out away from the house, I assume. He built chambers, that's rooms. That's the first time chambers shows up. Because these are chambers are not going to be built in the holy. Because you got the holy place. And we'll see the most holy place tomorrow, Lord willing. Chambers round about against the walls of the house, round about. So around the house, there are chambers. Several where I can assume where the porch is. So you got the walls of the house and around the walls like a, a horseshoe shape. There are rooms. Those rooms would be chambers for supplies, for the priest, for the sacrifices, rooms. And we'll get more of those measurements later and get confused. Both of the temple and of the oracle. And he made chambers round about. So inside those, those rooms, those chambers, is the house. And the house is the holy place, the most holy place, the oracle. The neither most, that's the only place that word shows up, chamber, that's the furthest away from you. The neither most, way away, was five cubits broad. The middle, the one closest to you after the neither most. So the most further, as you're looking at coming to you, the next one, the middle room, was six cubits broad, one cubit longer bigger and the third there's a third room coming at you with seven cubits another cubic bigger for without in the wall of the house he made narrow narrowed that's the only time that word shows up narrowed it's a proper word and narrowed Mark my Bible here. rest round about now, okay, this one right here. On the walls, up top, there's an indignation that comes all the way around. It's like a lift. And with those things, he said that the beams, that's the first time that word shows up, beams, should not be fastened in the walls of the house. So here are four walls. On the top of those walls, there's a lift that goes all the way around. And in those lips, that beam will set. So that beam is not nailed, it's not screwed, it's not bracketed by wood, it's not bracketed by steel, it's not bracketed by nails or, or screws. It sits on that lip. And the closest thing, if you ever worked with Lincoln Logs, you would put one of them beams right where the hole is and it would fit right there. But it's not like it. If you were in carpentry, you could look this up. Um, uh, you ever watched, uh, Bob Vila and uh, Norm Abram, when he's doing all the great work he does in his workshop, he, he will use these kind of terms. It's like a tongue, and groove. tongue, yeah, almost like a tongue and groove. So it would sit. There's no nailing fastened in the walls of the house and the house, when it was in building was built of stone, made ready before it was brought hither. So, before the, the stones came to Jerusalem, they were already cut. And when they were brought to Jerusalem, there needed to be no shaping, there needed to be no cutting, no grinding, no sanding. It would fit right where it would be fit. Now let me tell you, as a person who worked for the government with submarines, and the technology we have today, that not all, that never ever worked properly. You could not bring the sections together and they would fit perfectly. And yet here we are, BC, 
10, 12, according to Dayton Nissing, and these ignorant people by the scholars and by science and education, the most stupidest people ever to be on, on the planet Earth that didn't know nothing, could bring these materials to Jerusalem and put them, and they would fit perfectly. Impossible. There is one documentary, it's hard to even put a piece of paper between these two blocks. Yes, yes. And that took intelligence. And this would be the same intelligence as the building of the pyramid. Uh, there was a Pharaoh that loved Joseph and loved the God of Joseph and Jacob. And God said, I will bless them that bless you. And here Solomon's working with the wisdom of God. He's working with the blueprints that we'll find out later on that was given by David, which David got from God. There are heavenly blueprints for this thing. So Solomon, in his wisdom, and all the workers are not doing, and excuse me, if this, is, but this is the only word I can think of, they're not doing a half-assed job. And I, that's wrong, I apologize. But they're dedicated. They're not union. They are, this is for God, we're going to do the utmost importance for God. You can't even get church buildings like that being built. I've been in a few of them, projects. So the stones made ready before it was brought hither, so that there was neither hammer nor axe nor any tool of, get that, iron. Iron it has a bad cause in the Bible. Now wait a minute. You see how they fit this building together? Samuel, why hand me up the sledgehammer so I can get this? No, that wasn't it. Jeremiah, you want to get me the, the, the uh, crowbar? That wasn't it. There was no hammering. There was no iron tool. There was no, oh, try to get it on. It fit properly. And look how many years it took until the Nebuchadnezzar's army came and destroyed the whole place. And the beams are fastened on lips like they were. All that Nebuchadnezzar had to do with his army was just take down a couple walls and the rest of it just came in on its own. It's like God knew this place is coming down. This place is going to be destroyed. So there's no hammering. There's no axes. And if you've ever been to a construction site, I mean, there's always, today, there's machinery. There's hammering. There's jackhammer. There's riveting. There's, here it's silent. It is silence. It is fitting. It is working. It is going a great job. Any tool of iron heard in the house while it was in building. Probably the only, only sounds they were heard by praising God. Shouting. Okay. The door for the middle chamber. And this would be, I think, the middle, like I said, this is very hard, but this, verse 6, there's a middle chamber. The door for the middle chamber was in the right side of the house. So on the right side. The middle, the one in the middle. I mean, stands out. Remember, we got a neither. We got a middle. And we got the third. We're at the middle. And there's a door. And they, and they went up with winding. That's the first time that shows up. And stairs, that's the first time that shows up. What is that? It's a spiral staircase. How hard? The staircase is going around. Up. Into the middle chamber. So we are in the middle chamber. Into the middle chamber and out of the middle into the third. I can only assume that there's a chamber on top of this chamber. And there's a staircase. I'm not much in the carpentry. So he built the house. And finished it and covered the house with beams and boards of cedar. Oh, I bet you that smelled great. Cedar is a great smelling. Um, that winding is only one other place. It's Ezekiel 41 7. That winding, and again, that's talking about the temple. You just picture workmen taking a board. <laughs> Also, cedar is a natural insect repellent. 
for some insects. Moth particular. And Jesus talks about the moth destroying. The word of the Lord came to Solomon saying, Concerning this house that thou art building, if thou wilt walk in my statutes, he will for a while. Execute my judgments, he will for a while. And keep all my commandments to walk in them, he will for a while. Then will I perform my word with thee, which I spank unto David thy father. I mean, I'll take care of you, I'll bless you, I'll give you a blessing, but it don't work like that because they're going to fail. They're going to go against God and when you go against God, you can't have the love of God. You can't have God blessing you when you're in rebellion. I will dwell among the children of Israel. And he does. And will not forsake my, my people Israel. Now write that down. God made an oath to Solomon. I am not going to forsake the, the children of Israel. And there are churches today saying God is all through with them. No, Israel's been a bad child, and they're being stubborn against God. God's like, listen, all right, you want your money? You want your goods? All right, here you go. Take off. Go waste it all. And I'll be right here waiting for you to come home. And one day when he's in the big sty, he's just totally cursed, and, and where he's not supposed to be, where the Jew is today, he says, you know what? He comes to his right mind. He says, let me go back to my father and all the servants that he has and all the love that he had. Let's let me be one of his hired servants. And he's like, all right, I'm out of here. I'm going home. And he starts walking home. He comes up to the father. Father, get out of here. I'm all done with you. I've got this church over here. i got these. Oh, that's not the case. Man, he wraps his arms around the son. And the son, like, dad, I I'm sorry. He can't even really get the words out. He does. Father, I've sinned against heaven. I've sinned against you. Get the new coat. Get the get the shoes. Get get the fatted calf. He's not done with Israel. He's angry with them. And sometimes with kids, you, you know what? Go ahead. Just go do your thing. Maybe you'll get some sense. Maybe you'll come back. But when Jesus Christ comes back to second advent, the reason he's coming back is for the Jewish people. He's not coming back for the people who overpowered the... The Antichrist with a screwdriver and a calculator. The only way the Gentiles get through what Jesus said in the book of Matthew. How is it they will get to go in the kingdom? You helped my brethren. You took care of my brethren. You sought my brethren. And they don't even know they're doing it. And then once that millennium, he's got those Jews. And he gets the new heavens and new earth established. That's forever to be with those Jews. And where will they go? They will go to New Jerusalem where Jesus is. Where all the ones that follow Jesus, all the church, and all the servants, all the angels, and their God the Father. He ain't done with them. If he's done with them, then verse 13 should be erased out of your Bible. And it's not. I will dwell among the children of Israel and will not forsake my people Israel. You know, if a man gets saved today and he's a Jewish person, God will just as much reach out to him as a Gentile. So Solomon built the house and finished it. Yeah, see how the Bible in verse he built the this man boom, there it is. It's okay, we're done. That's a lot of work. And we'll look at you know dates and events coming up. He built the walls of the house within with boards of cedar, both the floor of the house and the walls of the ceiling. That's the only time that ceiling shows up. And I don't know if you ever dealt with, and I have, I worked with my dad cutting cedar trees down, cutting, and if you never smelled cedar, you have never smelled a smell so wonderful. And the fact is, when you walk into this house, the floors, the ceiling, the walls are all cedar, and they would be laying lengthwise, where you would see the cut cedar, and the, the, it's got like a reddish, rustic color, and it's like, oh, that guy smells good. And if you never had, if you go to a store where they have the laundry area, they would have cedar chips that you put in your uh, in your closet. Keeps moths away. Buy a pot and just smell them. Go to, go to the hardware store. Look at look for cedar. Say, hey, where's the cedar? And just go to take it out. 
start smelling it. Now, people may think you're weird, but it's beautiful. It's wonderful. Huh? Everybody does it. Everybody does it. And he covered them on the inside with wood, covered the floor of the house with planks of fur. Uh huh. So he puts cedar down, and on top of the cedar, he puts fir, which is a very strong tree. Again, the smell. He built 20, again, follow that number 20, cubits on the side of the house, both the floor and the walls with boards of cedar. He even built them for, a, for it within, even for the oracle. Now that oracle is the holy of holy. There's only one person that goes in there. The high priest. Now Solomon's temple is going to get destroyed. The temple is going to be rebuilt by Nehemiah. That oracle that we're looking at would be the foundation of Nehemiah and then the, the temple that would be in the time of Rome. There would be a veil there. That's where the veil of Jesus Christ rent when he died. <clears throat> the oracle, the holy of holy. Even for the most holy place. So that's where God would dwell. That would be the ark. That's the placement of the ark, the cherubim. We'll look at that, Lord willing, next time. And the house that is, the, that and the house that is, the temple before it was forty cubits long, and the cedar of the house within was carved with knops. And that's a design. You see that on the candlestick, little beaded kind of design and open flowers all was cedar there was no stone seen so all those coast costly stones are covered with wood and there are going to be places where they're going to take that wood they're going to overlay it with gold so what we're going to do is we're going to stop right here because verse 19 is going to pick up the oracle the most holy place and they'd be a good thing so we don't lose it but here you got the porch. Then you got the holy place. And inside the holy place would be the tables of showbread. Would be the candlestick. And it's going to be a little more than what the tabernacle. And you got the, the altar of incense. That's going to be there. That's where John the Baptist is going to stand. That room. That's where he's offering the prayer. And he turns around and he sees. I mean his father again. His father. I forget his name. Zacharias. And that's where he turns around and he sees Gabriel. He says, uh oh, I'm in trouble. There's a man in here. He's not to be in here. Never seen him before. There's a lot that goes into this book. I know that this is Solomon's and we're looking at Nehemiah's and the Roman one, but it's still the same plan, the same idea. 